everyone, it's Morgan Yates. And before we get into this video, literally at all, I just need to address the obvious, and that is that my face is not moving correctly today. I got my wisdom teeth out less than 48 hours ago. So if you think I look different, that's why. Or if at any point in this video, if I am like, smiling or laughing and it just something looks a little bit off that's why is because i like cannot move my face fully into like a smile configuration and it's very unfortunate but we are filming a video today anyway i have some exciting news i'm gonna be sharing in this video so i didn't want to delay it any longer so oh my gosh as you can tell by the title today i am doing a q a so i actually pulled questions a while ago i posted on instagram stories with one of the little question boxes asking for questions and i just saved those from forever ago so if you didn't see me recently ask for questions, it's because I didn't do it. But here we are answering lots of questions. Thank you to everyone who submitted them. And we're just going to jump right in. Yay. Question one pertaining to the title of this video. Someone asked, do you know when the med train trip will be? Um, as well as I just got a lot of other questions asking about the trip that I've talked about on my vlog channel as well as on Instagram that I'm going to be hosting that you guys can actually come book onto. So if you've been following me for a minute now, you've seen me go on some really exciting group travel trips to Greece and Croatia and Spain and Portugal and Israel and Jordan and just like the Mediterranean at this point I feel like I've been all over in these like group travel trip settings it's maybe my favorite way to travel just because of all the cool people you get to meet and I'm very excited that Kentucky agreed to team up with me to host a trip so that all of you guys can come on a little vacation with me it's gonna be really fun the big announcement is that the trip is finally here you can finally book it I'm gonna have the link below it's gonna be taking place June 20th through 28th of the summer and it's going through coastal Italy the south of France ending in Barcelona literally all of like the Mediterranean highlights in some of my favorite cities ever are uh, gonna be on the trip so I would love to meet any of you guys who can on that trip I think it would be a really fun time also if you decide to come on this trip or go on any other trip with them this is not sponsored they don't even know I'm mentioning this in this video I have a code which is just Kentucky Morgan and you get $100 off this trip or any trip with them I'm also gonna have linked over on Instagram a little promo video I put together thank you Lauren for this question which is also the perfect lead into today's sponsor this video is sponsored by American Tourister if you guys are not familiar with them they are a very affordable luggage brand so if you are coming on this trip or if you have any other summer travels coming up. I recommend checking them out. They're available at Target. This is the carry-on suitcase that I always travel with. I always worry that if I check a bag, even though it's unlikely that they might lose it, and then I'm going to get to my destination and have no clothes and no anything. So I prefer to fit everything in a carry-on bag. American Tourister also sent over this bag as part of their new Life is Good collection. They have three bags in that line. I think this looks very like Palm Springs. Maybe I'll bring it to Coachella. And that bag as well as the other ones in the new collection are available at Target. So again, if you're in need of any affordable luggage, I will have that linked below. So thank you again to them for sponsoring this and we will get on with our next question. Casey asks, when is your next trip? When this video goes up, I will be getting ready to leave to go to Scottsdale, Arizona, super randomly. I'm doing something with their tourism board and Adrian and I are going out there to do a little wellness retreat. It's gonna be a fun time. I'll be vlogging it and it'll be on this channel in a week or two probably. That's only for a few days and then a little bit after that on the 18th, I think, Adrian and I are going to Columbia um, the nation, not South Carolina. We're actually doing a Kentucky trip there. It's the Colombian coasts and culture trip. So excited for that. Joyce asks, would you ever go on The Bachelor? Absolutely not. I can think of absolutely nothing that I would excel less in. <laughs> um, on top of the fact that it would stress me out to no end and I couldn't even go through the audition process because I would be too stressed out. So I don't think reality TV and I will ever uh, intermingle. Annie asks, always wanted to ask a YouTuber this, what happens when YouTubers get old? Um, you get those anti-aging skincare brand deals. <laughs> I feel like every time I do a Q&A, I get a lot of these questions asking if I'm West Coast for life, do I see myself living in LA forever or would I go back to NC? At this point, I think I'm probably West Coast for life, I would say. I don't like putting a definitive answer on this type of thing because I don't know what I'm gonna wanna do in a year. Who knows? Five years down the road, I could be living in the south of France. That would be amazing. I definitely see myself in LA for the foreseeable future just because I don't know where else I would move necessarily or where it would make sense or where I would wanna move, but I think when the time comes, if and when I do want to move somewhere else, it'll make sense at that time and then I will go there. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a cop-out answer, but I don't, I don't know. Reading anything good right now? Yes, actually. I am currently reading the book Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. I got this book rec from Sarah Ray Vargas on YouTube. I watched one of her little book club videos and actually ordered a couple of the ones she talked about. I don't really like reading fiction. Yeah, I just don't like it. I would rather like watch something if I'm reading something that's fake and doesn't like apply to my life. Even when I try to read like self-help things, I feel like that's the only thing I can somewhat motivate myself to do. I often still get bored. So so this, however, this has caught and kept my attention. It's about negotiating and it's written by a guy who used to be the lead like hostage negotiator for the FBI. So he tells like all these crazy stories, which I of course also like because 
in another life I would have been like Alex Parrish from Quantico and the FBI. I can wishfully think <laughs> at least. But I think his stories are so interesting and then he just like explains all these negotiating principles and it applies so much to everything that I do and working for myself and it also applies to interpersonal relationships and blah blah blah. I really recommend this. I also got a few questions asking about how I travel so often in groups of girls and is there drama or like how do I avoid drama. You do not see over on Instagram because I didn't vlog this. I recently went to Cabo with four of my girlfriends. I guess a little bit before that I went to New York with Danielle, Kinsey, Brooke, and Keaton and we had our little girls New York Christmas trip. Next month I'm going to Coachella and sharing a house with like eight other girls. I do have some advice and tips here however for me this has just like never really been a problem. All of my friends are very chill. Everyone's very laid back, very accommodating, very go with the flow so we just don't really argue about anything. Like when we all got to Cabo for that trip I think we spent probably 45 minutes trying to decide who went in which room because genuinely no one cared. There were five of us and we had to split into two rooms and we finally just like flipped a coin because we were all like I literally don't care. But I think a couple big tips here going into any kind of like girls or not even just girls but any kind of like group vacation. I think the biggest things that could cause conflict are not being on the same page about how much money you want to spend. It's good to like have that conversation or whatever so that some people aren't over here like bitter when people want to do one thing but they don't want to spend money on it or blah blah blah. Two, I would say plan your sleeping arrangements in advance because some people that would probably cause conflict for it didn't with us but it'll at least if nothing else save you time before you get on the trip. Three, I think just be on the same page about what you're wanting to do on the trip. So if some people are super chill, some people are super like I'm gonna need to be at a yoga class on the beach at 7 a.m. and like everyone needs to come with me like that those things don't line up so I don't know there are also just certain friends you just shouldn't travel with cuz been there done that but I'm very lucky that all of my friends are very just like level-headed chill gals so we don't really ever fight about anything actually never we literally never fight about anything next question is how to get confident and love myself so I assume that this has to do with like appearance matters and I would say if you are at a place where you're not confident in who you are or what you look like or whatever I think it's a bit big of an ask to try to go from like being dissatisfied with whatever the thing is to like getting to a place where you're like I love all these things about myself like it's like you're just sending your brain these conflicting messages and it's a lot to jump from this one place over to the other. I think a much more realistic place to get to as your next step or end goal is just a place of like neutrality. Everyone should listen to the Ashley Graham Demi Lovato podcast um, that just came out. They talk a lot about this there but as much as like I love body positivity and that concept maybe you just need to get to body neutrality rather than trying to be like, oh, I love this thing and like that doesn't feel true. It's a lot easier to get to a place of just being like neutral about it and being like, this is the way it is. Like I accept it and like I appreciate that my body can like hike up this mountain and like carry me across the world to travel and I can appreciate that my body is strong and like allows me to work out and do all these things that I love. I think that's a very healthy place to be in. A, if you stay there, that's fine, but I feel like then it's a lot easier to launch into like a place of like positivity with um, confidence and all of those things. I don't know. That's my advice. I think also just doing things that make you feel good. But yeah, it is a process. It is a lot of unlearning messages that you have taken in from society and from advertising throughout your entire life of like what people should look like. And yeah, I think one thing that helped me was in college when I was taking all these like critical media theory classes, analyzing every ad and image and whatever from like a critical analysis perspective and being like, hmm, I'm gonna buy out of this messaging right now. I know it's easier said than done to say like don't compare yourself to other people but I think another practical thing here is like yeah you can appreciate that like this person over here is beautiful and looks good and whatever and just because you don't look like that doesn't mean that these things are mutually exclusive. You can also look great and be beautiful. You know what I mean? Layla asks, do you ever feel pressured to have an abundance of designer things like other influencers? Um, I don't feel any kind of pressure. I honestly at this point like that's just not something I care about. There was a time where I was all out here wanting this like Cartier ring, this Gucci bag, blah, blah, blah. And like I could afford it, but I could never bring myself to spend the money because I felt guilty. Because I felt like if I can easily spend this much money on such a trivial thing, then like there are people out there that need that more than me and I should be donating this money. So that's what I did. There was a time where I was like really out here wanting these things. I think for no other reason other than they were like cool. And again, it wasn't like a pressure. Like I felt like I needed that thing to be cool, but I just like, place this value on this item and I like wanted it because I was like oh it's gonna be exciting but really looking forward to the, buying the thing is more exciting than buying the thing I feel like at this point I don't really have those desires at all anymore to go buy designer things I would rather spend that money on travel or on taking my friends out to dinner or on donating it to a cause that I care about so as right now my priorities finance wise are definitely with saving I think I got a question somewhere in here about if I'm still saving to buy a house basically right when I was moving out here I was talking about I think in a vlog how I wanted or was considering buying a house on the East Coast as like an investment that's just too much work so because 
I'm not there to manage that, you know? So I instead am still saving for a house down payment, you know, could have bought one on the East Coast by now, but here we are, everything I like in LA is in the two to $3 million range at a reasonable, <laughs> reasonable price point. But should the day ever come when I can actually afford to buy a house in LA, that's never gonna happen if I'm not saving my money throughout time to be able to do that. So I think I've said this in my finance advice video, but I literally have a set amount of money that every single week I move into a separate savings account and forget about it and whatever. And that is my like one day house down payment fund. And she looking good, but she ain't looking LA good right now, you know, as well as I just feel um, called, if you will, to save my money as well for certain other things. <laughs> One random example, something that I felt was really important that I got the idea for a few months back was creating a like summer internship grant scholarship type thing for a subscriber. I talked about this in another video as well, but basically the summer that I came out to LA for the first time, which like led to, you know, one thing led to another, led to another. I would not be here living in LA and like doing YouTube full time if I hadn't come out here for this internship that summer. However, I could not, I was doing an unpaid internship. Okay, should be illegal, they not. I would not have been able to come out here and do that had I not received this um, like summer internship grant through my school. So I kind of want to pay that forward um, and have that kind of become an annual thing, hopefully for someone else in a similar situation who's doing an unpaid internship. So that's one thing. A second thing that I have been, sa I've never talked about this in a video, something I've been saving my money for for a couple years now as well, kind of in a similar style to my like house savings fund where like every X amount of time I move a certain amount of money into this like um, whatever fund. I'm just going to say what it is. Ever since early college, I have felt called to adoption, if you will, at one point in the far, far future to the point that I felt like I had this responsibility to start early and like planning for that so that that can happen one day. So I literally have, this is absurd to say I am so single and 25, but I have an adoption fund that I save so that one day that can become a reality. And it's not like I popped up one day and decided, oh, I'm ready to do this. And I never took any steps towards it when I knew that was something I wanted to do. So I just am a big fan of financial responsibility and putting your money where your mouth is and where your heart is and your priorities are. I'm talking about that for too long. Okay, Jillian asked, love this question. What do you struggle with most as an Enneagram eight from a fellow eight? Any kind of display of emotion or sharing feelings. Oh. I'm the maid of honor in my best friend Caroline's wedding. You guys know Caroline, everyone loves her. She's getting married this summer and I have to give a speech. And let me tell you how much I've been dreading this speech. I think about it like every single day, how much I am dreading giving the speech at my best friend's wedding because it makes me so uncomfortable to share how I feel publicly. Morgan from the editing future here. <laughs> Secondly, and maybe this is the better answer because I think it actually ties into the first. I think actually my bigger struggle is only doing things I'm good at because I feel vulnerable when I am not good at something. <laughs> and so I just stick to the things I'm good at. And I think that at a certain extent that limits you. So I don't know, we're trying to work on that right now. Next question is if you weren't an influencer, what would your career be? I think I would still be in this realm to some extent. I would probably say I'd be a talent manager, perhaps. I think I would like that a lot because I do love the negotiating business side of YouTube a lot. My friends are always jokingly calling me Manager Morgan because I'm, one more time, make a noise one more time out there. My friends are always calling me Manager Morgan because I'm always out here like pitching us little group things and whatever. Someone asked dream vacation. Right now, the places at the top of my travel list are Turkey. I really wanna do like sailing the Turkish Riviera. I really wanna go to Capri and like other random coastal Italy spots that I've not been to. And I also wanna go to Malta, so and Australia eventually, but if you can tell, I just like tropical places. <laughs> Has this been out of focus for this long? Sorry. And final question ending on a lighthearted fun note is what is your go-to karaoke song? Some of you may appreciate the humor in this because I do not like country music. I can only listen to it if I am like in Nashville and just like committing to the theme for the weekend. But somehow my go-to karaoke song is Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. That is my song. I'm not a singer by any means, but if you give me a country song, I can somehow turn on this like, I bring out my past. I used to have the strongest Southern accent. Everyone in my family still has a very strong Southern accent, except for me. Long story short, we switched schools when I was in middle school and people weren't ever like mean about it, but I had become aware that like I sounded different than everybody else. And so I made it go away over time. Yeah, if you watch videos even from just like four years ago, you'd be like, girlfriend, you sound like you are living on a farm. And yep, that girl is still somewhere in here. <laughs> and so when I have to get up and sing a karaoke song, for whatever reason, it's gonna be something country. That is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me. I will be back to normal where I can like express my face <laughs> in the next video. Hope we could all find this amusing. Again, thank you to American Tourister for sponsoring this as well as I will have the trip with Kentucky linked below. So that is it and I will see you in my next video.